All right, it's May 3rd, 2023, and I don't even know where to start. We just had Powell in the FOMC, and it was potentially historic. We're going to talk about that. I got a lot of historical fun facts, and we're going to cover the Fed, but another bank is in trouble, and we got a bunch of weird news after the bell. So I'm going to start with the first one. PacWest Bancor, they just had earnings not too long ago and things weren't that bad for them. They announced after hours that they are weighing strategic options. The stock dropped 50% on the news and the news is, according to somebody who asked not to be identified, that's what that's what the report says. I don't know, a man. I don't who are these people? Is it like anyways, but According to this person, they asked not to be identified. They said PacWest is working with a financial advisor and they are considering either a bank breakup or a capital raise. And they said they want to break up the bank because pretty much as of now, again, it was FRC just at the beginning of this week. Nobody really wants to buy these banks right now because you're going to have to take a huge loan loss. And then if you have exposure to commercial and different consumer elements, it's not not looking too good so that's why they're hoping they could break it up and sell it off before the government comes in and does it for them but we'll see but now like this is huge because we just saw frc the reaction was kind of muted we watched crazy stuff in the bonds and all of that but we were just saying we don't know who the next person is and we won't know until something happens well guess what this is the next thing. Now it is Pack W, and it's the same exact template, just a lot earlier. I didn't think they would have been this bad. I thought maybe uh, who was it? I think it was Zion with the big commercial lending, and they had news after hours. I try to flip it. I'm done with the banks. After tomorrow, I'm gonna baptize myself in no more. I'm gonna sell every single bank, man. I gotta, I gotta figure that out because this is crazy. They even as Zion CEO and VP, they threw in a million dollars at the stock at 27. It's down at 19 dollars right now, but. It's like we thought other banks would have done worse, but it now somehow is Pack W. They're following the template of saying we're pursuing strategic options. That's usually when the panic starts, and then we're considering selling some assets. And now give it a week, two weeks. I don't know. Maybe we could get some lines and do a under over like gambling lines. I know you, yeah, you crackhead. Don't even stop it. But anyways. We were just asking who's going to be next. Now we know there is Pack W on the list. And now the questions we got to be asking is one, what happens to Pack W or Pack West and when? Two, who comes next after them? Or how does this affect the contagion wise? And now number three, which is again where I'm saying this is where today gets crazy. How does this affect what Powell just said? Again, this is happening on the day of Powell, I mean, technically nothing happened, but this is the news that gets people panicking. This is where we make a video. Oh, damn, I just hit that. Oh, yeah, I forgot, bro. This sweater, thank you, whoever's it is. Somebody left this at my house, and I was wearing it. was comfy. It's really soft, so thank you. I don't know. if God bless. One of my homies, I'm sure. I think I know who it is, so God bless you. Amen. But we, we just had Powell today, man. I'm sorry for the ADD interruptions, but like I'm saying now, let's talk a little bit about Powell and what happened Today, he didn't really say anything during the press conference, and the statement was a total curveball, but I will tell you this, he did move the puck in terms of the pause and all of that, but this is where the confusion lies because it is still very ambiguous in terms of the pause, and a lot of people were kind of hoping or trying to talk their way into having a super clear pause announcement today, that's just not what we got. So you remember what we've gone over from Monday to even yesterday. You can watch the video. Here is the side by side statement. And this is what you'll notice. They changed the statement, but not how everybody expected because they add to it but they didn't add to it in the way we talked about yesterday. They didn't take stuff out and say, well, now we are at sufficiently restrictive. That would have been a very clear and explicit signal that, boom, the Fed is where they want to be. Now we can know for certain at the next meeting, they will be pursuing a pause from there. They didn't say that, but they did add or remove language that didn't talk about adding more rate hikes. So that was the good part. But now this is what I was saying. 
they kept this line about additional policy firming the one that they brought up last time so you can see it they took out the line that says the committee anticipates some and now they said in determining the extent people wanted that to say sufficiently restrictive instead they said determining the extent which is good because that's saying the limit the top end additional policy firming may be appropriate they kept that in there and that's what we were talking about where if they got rid of that completely and then they said restrictive it would have been clear cut and now this is where i'm saying a lot of this was generally ambiguous if you really want to be like i guess critical of it but now let me tell you the initial reaction to this today and this is where some of the history comes into play was that and even then the initial reaction is still holding till now but the initial reaction was that this is a clear sign of pause the simple fact that they took out some and again this plan the committee anticipates some by getting rid of any language that is like further anticipating more and say now determining the top they saw that as a very very clear-cut signal they as anybody who's like yeah that's it that's a clear-cut signal from the pause by removing that language we are boom we're good to go so i disagree with that but now let me give you more evidence to why the bulls believe that and it's 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 decent evidence i'm not and that's what i'm saying this is where the confusion i think lies today because we definitely made progress towards the pause but it wasn't the home run i mean i think it was a single maybe a double about a triple but it seems like everyone's like that's gone that's out of here home run boom we're ready to go and I, I don't know how i feel about that per se but the evidence of the pause is one they remove language of anything further and that is something we've documented and tracked and they have signaled that very very clearly so that's your first point but now number two in 2006 they used a similar phrase and that marked the last rate hike believe it or not they said something about pretty much being data dependent that's what today said and that they're gonna wait and they said even in 2006 additional policy firming believe it or not but here's where it gets great after 2006 it was the last rate hike but they held the rates then for 18 months before cutting i believe in october 2007 and that was the june 2006 meeting where they said a statement there but literally that's what people were bringing up today and that's what people were looking for and this is where i was saying i was like i don't know in a very weird way i think this is still kind of all a reach more or less so my view on this is that yeah Powell did give us something, something for the Bears, something for the Bulls. He moved the puck towards the pivot, arguably as close as can be, but he was still way too ambiguous. Uh, ambiguous. What did I say? Ambiguous. I don't think he wanted to signal anything to the front runners. I also think he doesn't know the humble approach, you know, and, and I could get behind given everything's going on, but it wasn't as clear cut and just like, yo, what have we already seen yesterday australia surprise rate hike the week before that we had another surprise rate hike was it canada so it's like we've been getting some of these signals already and i don't think looking around everyone's like yeah there you go it, it wasn't the same so pretty much we were talking yesterday the real volatility the real easy answer if it was a clear-cut answer that's it if it was a clear signal to pause that's money that's easy to play if it's a clear signal against that's easy to the downside people would be disappointed now we're in the middle i said it welcome to the war of the narratives that's what we're going to see going on from now but it's just like it, it wasn't a clear pause announcement today and now you're going to start getting back and forth and and now we got to see if, if is it clear enough to support a rally to the higher end or will it support the bonds and the bid they have now that's what we're going to find out over the next days but it's very very simple thankfully we talked about this yesterday we said this could potentially be a dud and it kind of was maybe a less little more confusing we'll see what happens with it but it's like we knew this meeting wasn't supposed to be much the move got a little bigger towards the end of the day but now this is all about june and now june that's the summary of economic projections they could come out with a new terminal rate that's the thing about today another reason why people think this is the pause announcement because guess what rates are at five to five and a quarter right here right now after the announcement today your dot plot your median by the fed of 2023 terminal rate expectation was 5.1 or 5.2 you're there already so june 
we're going to find out if that stays the same or what if they move it up. Who knows? Who knows? But people aren't expecting too much just yet. But this is what I'm trying to tell you. It comes down to June because it's very simple. If he pauses at the next meeting in June, then that's it. That will be the real pause rally. At that point, nobody's reaching. That was the evidence in, in if you want to compare it to June of 2006, when they said a statement like that and they were there, at least we actually saw them pause. And one pause led to uh, an additional like 16 other pauses over the next 16, 18 months or whatever it was. So that's what I'm saying here. We knew this wasn't going to be the biggest event. We knew June was going to be important. I think this is going to start a war of the narratives. We got to deal with this bank stuff. And that's what I'm saying now. We'll see how that factors into all of this. But it's simple. This isn't the real pause rally. I do think it will rally when people know there's a pause. I mean, you see how excited people want to get. But I think the evidence of a pause, a.k.a. now, two months in a row of staying at the same rates. I think that's what unleashes it. And I think Powell wanted to create a little bit more uncertainty until we could get close enough there. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully you're ready. I made a couple of plays. I sold out of my bonds beforehand. We made money. Then I bought the bonds on the, on the top pop because my opinion when I was like, okay, people are thinking it's a hike. I disagree. My plan was just play any of the fake pause pivot rally until Powell came on and batted it down. But then the bonds split up. And that's what I'm saying now. We need to watch that throughout the days. But I ended up losing all my bond plays and then winding up holding one short on the 10 year after the profits over the last two days. I mean, we're down like three, 400 bucks. And then I made a a bad play on the banks after hours gonna be watching that but i was talking about a little after hours today man we might just be focusing on the bonds from here out and start really clearing some other stuff because this is even getting crazy and then apple earnings tomorrow we're gonna see but i, I don't think powell has uh laid the groundwork for the most calm market as we move forward so i hope you're ready ladies and gentlemen but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure hydrated, healthy, ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And honestly, bro, I need you to enjoy life. Put a smile on your face. There's more to life than the market and all of that. And I say that so you could enjoy life and take a look around because I think you'll learn about the stock market and you'll learn about a lot of things when you start taking in the beauty of life, my friend. So seriously, learn from nature, okay? Look around. Nature and the lessons of nature tell us a lot. A lot of things, oh my God, it takes time for a tree to grow. So that's not, I don't, I'm not gonna say anything. You can't know the call without the stuff and then the just, We'll talk about it. We'll talk. But Chad, I love you. God bless you. Thank you again for all the support. I will see you in the morning. And that's it. That's it. Horn. I have this one. <laughs> yeah, I was at the office. Today was serious. Well, not really. I just went downstairs. I had to be in. You know, that's why even today it's crazy. This is today's wow. You ready, Chad? I'm ready. I can't believe it's already almost May. You already burned almost half the year already. That's unbelievable. Okay, I'm leaving, man. Thank you again for the sweater. God bless you. <laughs>